Okay, so for part two of my two, 210cc build, I just wanted to show a comparison between the two different styles of billet cylinders you can get for this displacement. I'm not trying to stir up any rivalries here, but I don't think I've ever seen a video where anyone's had the two side by side. So this is just sort of comparing the differences. Uh, one thing I do want to note about this one here is that it's not actually from Mopower Performance. Uh, this cylinder is a Hercules CNC cylinder. So the overall fin design and, and the layout will be exactly the same as the Mopower. But I've been told by them that they ask for some different specs when they get it machined. So I suspect that means his sleeve will be a little bit different and possibly his tolerances on the on the machining. Uh, from what I see in the pictures of his ones, they, um, they look like they're a little bit less rough than the one that I got straight from Thailand. So what have I got here? I've got the stock. I've got a Takagawa 181 cylinder a Gromfather's 210 and a Hercules 210 as well. Straight away you can see the Gromfather's one is a bit of a beefcake. Uh, these are huge fins, a lot more fins than what you see on the 181 cylinders. Um, so it looks like it's going to run really cool with this cylinder. Uh, your Mo Power style of cylinder. Um, the fin design's quite a bit different to what you see on the others. Uh, it's got these horizontal fins as opposed to in line with the cylinder. Uh, the other thing is um, on the on the uh, clutch side of the engine, the fins are actually a lot smaller than what you see on uh, even the even the Takagawa cylinder. Uh, on the on the cam change tunnel side, they are a fair bit larger than the stock ones, uh, but I still think they're a bit smaller than what you get on a Gromfather's style of cylinder. How this how this affects it while it's running, I'm not too sure. But from what I've seen and what I've read, both of them, both of them run really reliably. Um, there's plenty of examples of um, both styles with, you know, people thrashing the shit out of them and, and people that have got quite a lot of Ks from, from either option. So the next thing to compare would be the sleeve size because that is a huge difference between the two cylinders. Um, so for both of these, you will need to bore your case to get it to fit. Um, for your grandfather's cylinder, the sleeve is quite thin. Um, I think this is only going to work as a 210. There's no chance you'll be able to, to overbore this if it wears out. You just have to get it re-sleeved. So the diameter of the grandfather's is 71.2 for the sleeve. Uh, compared to the Hercules, which is 75 and a half. So if you've got the Hercules or even the Mo Power version of it, it's a very, very thick sleeve. Um, you can probably overbore it twice uh, once it starts to wear out. So this is sort of a a lifelong cylinder, I guess you could say. Um, so that's its main advantage, but it's also a little bit of a disadvantage depending on uh, how, you're, how you're doing this build. So what I mean is when you get your cases bored for these cylinders, There's not actually a lot of meat between 
your oil passage and where the cylinder will sit. So this this is my monkey cases which have been bored to suit the Gromfathers. Um, if I was going to go with the uh, Hercules, I would actually be coming into that oil passage and it would need to be welded up and then re-bored and re-milled. Um, so it's a lot more, it's a lot more work if you're gonna try get this one to fit. Um, that's, that's sort of the main headache when you're doing uh, the Hercules. So what I'd probably suggest is if you are in North America, you can ship your cases off to, to Mo Power and he'll, he'll do all the machining and the welding uh, and he charges a pretty reasonable price to do that. Uh, so that's, that's if you're in North America. If you have access to a machine shop or you, you've got the gear, you can, you can weld it yourself again. Hercules is a great option, uh, or the or the Mo Power version. Um, if you're like me, I don't, I can't weld, uh, and I don't have that sort of gear. So for me, the the most simplest option was to just bore, and then your grandfather's style cylinder will fit, and happy days. Um, if you're going to go any bigger than this, if you're going a two twenty three. Uh, then again, whichever option you choose, you're going to have to weld. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of price, your Mo Power is going to be cheaper. Uh, if you live in North America and you can ship your cases off to him to get welded up, even with all that work, it's still going to be a bit cheaper to get the, the Mo Power. Um, if you're if you're having to bore it yourself or pay a machine shop to do it, um, especially in Australia, uh, you'd probably be surprised at how close the price will come between the two different options. So that's, that's something that you gotta keep in mind. The next difference is the way that the cam chain tunnel has been machined. So in your grandfathers, it's um, it's just a straight slot. So your your width here is a bit less. Um, it's a little bit less than what you get in the in the one eighty one cylinders. Uh, but again, it's probably not a big deal because there's plenty of guys that are thrashing these things and are getting pretty decent KZ out of them as well. Uh, on your Mo Power, it kicks out, so you maintain the thickness. Uh, this is actually thicker than what you get on a 181, so that's always reassuring. Um, uh, your side on the side, even though it looks smaller because of the fins, the actual meat in the cylinder is is actually more than what's in the Gromfathers, because most of that is finning. So this is a, a very strong cylinder, very thick sleeve. Um, and you know, people are doing some really crazy stuff with this style of cylinder now. Um, there's a couple of turbo, turbo 223s getting around, um, some nitrous guys as well. Um, currently the, at the time of making this video, the quickest one eighth mile Grom in the world uh, is running a two i believe a 253 uh similar style to this but a bit bigger and is running a stroker crank but you get the picture if anyone else wants to know anything else about these cylinders just drop a comment below i'll uh i'm happy to to measure measure some stuff and and tell you what's different um personally for my build mainly because of this whole boring situation I'm going to be running the Gromfathers um, yeah so 
we'll see how that turns out otherwise i've got this one here and i'm just gonna have to find someone who's gonna weld it for me and not charge a fortune all right so moving on uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the crank because when you do one of these big kits your normal Kotako crank or Takagawa crank uh, will not work because the size of the pin in the piston is going up from 13 to 15. So when you do this you're going to have to sort out something about your crank. So the most common options are to bore the Kotako rod. Uh, lots of people were doing that for a long time. Um, I'm not particularly a big fan of this option. Um, I don't really want to be pulling meat out of the rod. So the other option is to rebuild your crank with a bigger forged rod and that's starting to become a bit more common common now um, again Mo Power is offering this part um, so you can always get him to to rebuild your crank with um, the new bigger rod um, so I'm using a, a similar part to him um, it's a, a Jiso forged rod um, so it has a slightly bigger, big end bearing, uh, and it's also got the bigger, the bigger pinhole to suit the, the 210. So this is on my, uh, Takagawa crank. It's, um, lasted really well, even with all the abuse that I give it as a 181 full valve. Um, but... I've just gotten it rebuilt, so the new rod, and I've put some some brand new SKF crank bearings on it as well. So this should take care of me for my new setup. Just so you get an idea of uh, the size. That is a stock rod, uh, and that is a Takagawa X section rod so the stock one is you know piddly as all hell uh, lots of people have these fail uh, the Takagawa one it's been really solid for me as a 181 um, even compared to that my new rods slightly beefier the webs a little bit thicker uh, and your your flanges are you know similar width but this has the groove down the back and this is solid uh, the Jiso style rod also has double oil holes so another plus uh, one thing to note with the forged big big pin rod is that your your length center to center is ever so slightly smaller so the stock rod and your takagawa rod are 92.7 mils uh, whereas your forged rod is 92.5 so in the grand scheme of things it's not really going to do a whole heap to your setup but it will reduce your compression just a tad because it's going to sit a tiny bit lower so if you want to restore the compression back, you can run a thinner base gasket or mill, uh, mill your cylinder. Um, or otherwise, you know, you can run a little bit milder compression. It's not going to really do any harm. So just for reference, I've got stock 125 piston here. Uh, just so you guys can see how much bigger these big bore pistons are. It, it is actually quite a lot. Um, 
but it's not really very important for this comparison. So what I've got here is I've got the Takagawa 181 four valve piston. Um, this is with three, well, about 4,000 Ks of use. Um, I have cleaned up most of the soot that I had built up on it, um, but overall it's, it's actually in fairly good nick. Um, I've got a Gromfather's JE forge piston. And for comparison, this is a JE forge piston for a Kawasaki ZX6R. Uh, so when I bought this cylinder, Hercules supplied it to me as cylinder only uh, because they didn't have any 68 mil pistons. So because it was cylinder only, I needed to find myself a piston. Um, so after looking around quite a lot, um, I ended up deciding to go with the ZX6 piston. And um, one of the interesting things that I've found is um, both these pistons, not sure if you can get it on the camera, but both these pistons from JE are both forged into the same blank, which is a, a 967M forged blank. And then from the blank, they are machined a little bit differently for, for the two different bikes. Um, so essentially the, the Gromfather's piston is very, very similar to a ZX6. So, you know, it's going to work really well because a ZX6 is built to, to go 14,000 revs out of the box. So, you know, in a little monkey, it's, it's going to do the job. Um, yeah, you can see the, the valve pocket sizes are a lot bigger on the ZX6. Um, and the actual spacing and the size are big enough where you could run it with the uh, Takagawa head or the Kosei head um, without really any issues. Um, it looks like there's a ridge here in the, in the camera, but it's actually just a machine mark. It's, it's actually flat through there. So you're not, you're not gonna have the valves hit the piston on here. Um, the only modification you really have to make to the ZX piston to get it to work is um, these edges here of the dome. So on a on a Gromfather's or a Mo Power Mo Power piston, you can see the dome sort of drops off at the side, and that is about 48 mil wide, uh, and that's to suit the uh, the chamber shape on your Koso head or, or your Takagawa head. Um, whereas on the ZX piston, it's sort of got a, a bit of an ear that comes up on each side. Um, in terms of dome height, they're, they're both very similar. Um, this little recess for the spark plug is the same height as the dome height on the Gromfathers. So you can get away with leaving the dome as is in the middle uh, but if you want it exactly the same you can mill that back uh, in any case you'd have to mill mill off the ears and then also mill the dome back to the crown height along the edge here and then you and then your dome would end up having an edge just like the grandfather's one uh, if you do that, you can pretty much just run the ZX6 piston because your ring set is the same. Your The pin on the ZX6 is just a tad thicker than what's in the Gromfathers, uh, but both JE parts. Um, and the, the bore size, so the, the ZX pistons from JE, you can get in 67mm, 68mm, 69mm. 
the other main difference here is um, the the angle of the valves. So your Koso and Takagawa heads, your valve angle Your valve angle is 16 degrees, whereas in the ZX head, your valve angle is a bit shallower. It's 12 degrees. Uh, the, it's, it shouldn't really give you any headaches though, because the, the pocket depth on this, um, ZX pistons are fairly deep, so um, even though your angle is is a little bit different, uh, when the when the valves are fully down, it's not really going to get to the bottom of the pocket. All right. So when I put all this back together in the cases, I will take a few more measurements to get your your deck height. Um, yeah, deck height, the squish, and the compression ratio when you are using the Gromfather's piston and cylinder with a Gyso forge rod. Uh, again, I don't think that's anything, I don't think that's information that anyone's posted up before, so it'll be good, good to put out there. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. All right, so that's it for comparing the um, the two different styles of 210 uh, and, and a little bit about this piston. Um, so something, something else that I've been cooking up for when I go to 210, it's, on the side is my new clutch, which is a six bolt, seven disc clutch. So it is probably overkill for a 210, but you know, a nice clutch is always good to have. Um, there are a few guys out there who are starting to overpower, um, the, the five disc and six disc clutches. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully this can help, help you guys out. Um, so what I've done is I've got a Kotaku six disc kit. Um, the Kotaku kit only has three standoffs drilled. Uh, so you'll have to... You'll have to clamp this down in a drill press and and drill out the other three. Um, out of the box, there's there's a, a dimple in the standoff, so it's pretty easy to center your your drill. Um, but yeah, so you, you just drill it in the drill press. You tap the hole like you would for the stock plate when you're converting it to a six bolt, uh, and then that's how you get your six bolt Kotaku plate, um, and then. The Kotaku 6 disc kit is a bit different to the SMR. So the SMR kit has six thin discs that fit in the stock uh, basket with the stock pressure plate and top plate. And um, so your, your stack height between the stock five plate and the SMR six plate is the same stack height. That's how it works. Uh, with the Kotaku kit, uh, it, they actually include a, a different pressure plate and a different top plate so that you can fit six OEM thickness discs in the, in the clutch. Um, so they, they, 
Kataka is obviously focused on on you know having a, a durable clutch. That's why they go for the thicker discs. Um, but if you want this maximum bite, what you do is you get the SMR six disc kit. Take out four of your uh, sorry, take out five of your Kataka discs and replace that with the SMR six disc. So when you're running the, the SMR six disc plus one Kataka disc, the stack height is exactly the same as your Kataka six disc kit. So that's something that I've been coming up with. Um, when I bought it, I was uh, when I bought the Katago, I was actually quite disappointed with how it performed. But I was comparing a three bolt Katago to a six bolt OEM, so I was I was a bit disappointed. So I ended up pulling this out and putting five of the Katago discs in my six bolt six bolt OEM clutch, and then I just sort of had this Katago top plate and pressure plate lying around. So I thought I'd try drill it and tap it and see how it went and then um, after measuring all the stack height versus the OEM disc I thought hey I'm just going to try the SMR and see if it fits and it it actually does it's it's still got the clearance to disengage so you know this is this is going to be something good to try out see how it goes all right, so I hope this video has been helpful for anyone who's wanted to see these two styles or two tens next to each other and uh, wanted to know about what else you need to go from a fully built 181 up to a 210. So uh, let me know in the comments if I've missed anything, if there's any more info you guys want to hear. Um, otherwise, yeah, stay tuned for the next part of my 210 build.